Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. This is actually a call that we do every Monday at six o'clock. If you'd like to join us live, the link is in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So what's up guys? Steven's gonna handle some technical stuff uh, for a minute and uh, we're gonna do our brotherly check-in, but this is how most of our brotherly <laughs> check-ins go where we just get distracted with business. So we don't end up doing those unless we're doing them here live. Um, so that's why we try to do them. Anyways, um, yeah, last week was a roller coaster for me. Um, we started off kind of slow and then got some jobs coming in uh, that picked up some more client-based work, which I'm actually super enjoying. Um, they're outside of my comfort zone as far as like the art and stuff goes, uh, but they're with some pretty good friends. So um, that is enjoyable and stuff that I want to be talking about more. That's all Shopify stuff that I'm um, mostly speaking about, like the client work. So that's good. Um, but I had someone ask me a question last week and I did something this weekend that I thought like was a pretty good illustration of um, how to answer that question. And so the question that I got asked last week was um, someone thinking about, you know, the way that they're using their print on demand business. And they're saying like, they're just doing a lot of what we suggest, which is find landing zones and then make improvements on the designs or take inspiration from those designs. And um, this person was wondering like, is that the best business model for scalability? Um, or is that just kind of um, a way to get started so you don't run out of ideas? And I think this person was ready to kind of transition into, um, doing more of what Steven talks about, uh, which is the product lines where you're taking kind of this one customer base and you're no longer just serving them on one platform with one product, but you're going to be able to serve them on multiple platforms with multiple products. And um, so that is a good mindset to get in. And so I was trying to help them think about some ways that they can stay insp inspired, um, you know, inside of this one customer base, because he was saying like, it's not his, um, you know, passion or hobby. It was just something that he found that he was having sales with uh, and has started putting up more designs in that area. And so he was asking me like, how do you stay inspired? Like every once in a while, he'll have an idea that comes to his head and it will work well with this customer base, but um, not always. And sometimes there's a struggle or like a drought of just ideas and things to go after. So uh, it can feel pretty like unmotivating to like sit down and like, okay, I have time to work on this business, but like, I don't know what I'm doing next. Um, and so my suggestion to him was something I kind of lived out this weekend with the Day of the Dead celebration that we went to um, here in Atlanta, which was really fun. And basically my suggestion was like, get to know that culture um, or that, you know, customer base that you are selling to. And there are lots of different ways to do that. Um, the easiest and the one that I usually do when we're going after a new customer base is to just watch YouTube content around, uh, you know, whatever subjects they're interested in. So um, if they're cat parents or cat moms or whatever, you can just type in, you know, maybe not like funny cat videos to YouTube because it would just be a ton of like craziness, but finding some of the like personalities uh, in that customer base or that make content that that customer base would enjoy um, is usually a good idea. And again, we're not trying to take like their exact sayings or anything, um, but just to get to know the culture a little bit, what type of things do they talk about? Is there specific locations that they go to, uh, whether that be like generic things like the library or uh, coffee shops or like very specific, like, oh, they love going to this national park or this state um, for these events that are happening. Um, and just getting to know kind of what that customer um, is seeing from people who create content around things that they're interested in. Um, and so with me actually going to this event this weekend, the Day of the Dead celebration, um, that was like a lot of like information that I was downloading. Like, yes, I was having a fun time and enjoying myself, but as I was seeing like all the different costumes and like the face painting and how popular certain um, like sayings were and the colors and all of these things like I'm taking in that information uh, and I can now use it for a print on demand um, business where I'm like okay I just saw all of these great examples of like the colors and all those things I just described and now how can I use that for design work that I want to do um, to sell to these customers and so 
it's just like I said, there's a million and one ways to do that. Um, but really getting to know the customer that you're going after, not just what keywords are they going to click on and what artwork is working in this general location, whether it be Amazon or another Shopify store or whatever, um, but getting a better picture of that person as a whole, like what type of YouTube videos are they watching? Um, and yeah, what locations are they going to? Looking at Facebook groups that have, um, you know, that similar interest, looking at Instagram, Pinterest, like all of these places that if you were in this community or if you were this customer, um, you know, what would you be looking at? And then taking all that information and, and then finding inspiration in that. Um, you know, that's something that I do a lot. It's something I really enjoy. Uh, even last Friday, talking about some of the Shopify stuff that I'm doing, I like made this design and I thought it was personally not the greatest thing in the world. And I sent it to Steven and I was like, this is kind of more your era. Like, I don't really like this. So this like breaks all of my design rules, but <laughs> what do you think about it? Like the client just called me and like told me he loved it, but is this something I should actually like move forward with or should I give him like a version to? And Steven was like, oh, it's fine. Like if he's happy with it, then um, just because it's completely out of my style and not my taste at all, um, you know, that's still okay because it makes him happy and the customers that he's going after are probably going to enjoy it. Hopefully, we'll see. There's a couple more weeks before this thing um, starts trucking along. But that's kind of the idea that I wanted to get across. And it might be a little counterintuitive to what we're going to talk about here tonight, um, now that I say it out loud. But just know that there are kind of like levels to the print-on-demand game. And there are phases that you will go through. Um, we've talked about this 100 listing or this 100 product idea uh, where we just want you to get things up. But what I'm talking about is more specifically like when you're ready to switch gears and move into, okay, I've made all of these listings. I kind of have this customer base that I know is buying from me. Um, what are the, like, the next steps that I should be taking? Uh, and that's something that I'm becoming very passionate about as that's a lot more of my day-to-day -day actions now are learning how to get away from Amazon, learn how to work with multiple um, warehouses that are printing all these products and represented on one page and all the different types of products that we can print on, not just, um, you know, digital um, like graphics that we're putting on things. Um, there's yeah, just a lot of possibilities and I'll get into that as the weeks go on. Um, but I do want to stay focused for tonight a little bit on this hundred products idea. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted Steven to share a little bit of what he did last week. If you're ready now that you're back on camera, <laughs> are you ready? Yes. Okay. And I guess before we go too, too deep into all this, um, I'll talk about my weekend, but what we really want these calls to be are just like a conversation community growth sessions. We are constantly learning. We want our community constantly, constantly be learning. We are, I think what we really focus in on right now is POD and partnerships. Partnerships in the teaching, partnerships in our actual POD business. You heard Nathaniel just talk about his partnership and a new partnership that we're working on. I find that very enjoyable. I want to bring a lot more of that into our group. We've talked about partnerships before in our Facebook group. Now I want just to have it openly in this format so where these calls are just conversations. We've stopped doing the 20-minute calls, not because we don't like them or people don't want them, just because we don't have enough time currently in the Q4 season to do everything. So We've said this last week a little bit, but if you have questions, we want to start bringing people on camera and then spending the end of these calls, like helping people. Um, so anywhere you stuck, if you want to look over listings, all those things that we were doing on the 20 minute calls, we just want to bring here. A lot of the 20 minute calls that we had, I was asking people, hey, would you mind if this was in a public forum or if more people were watching this? Everybody pretty much was above board and said, that's fine. Some people were saying, I don't feel comfortable with that because I'm sharing this niche or this customer base or whatever. And that's fully, I understand that. So we might go back to offering something like that, just not probably for the foreseeable future. So I want this call to be able to provide that question and answer with this community. Cause I know a lot of people enjoyed that and I enjoyed that. And I think that's what we bring to this space is just the, we've been doing this for a long time. We have a lot of ideas and I think it's better suited when we give advice to hear a little bit more about you so we can advise you a little bit better. And I, I'm starting to see that nobody's in like a, your only unique situation. There might be mm -hmm. very you unique situations that you're dealing with, but the overarching problem, I think as we answer it, will help a lot more people. And that's what I'd like this call to address. Another thing is 
Nathaniel talked a little bit about this 100 listing. That is pretty much tonight's call that I think will be this month's push. As we've done a lot of these 20 minute calls, I see a lot of people struggling getting started and I kind of want to help people get over that hump of getting started. I know from selling many different ways online, the mindset from selling through reselling, selling wholesale, selling private label is to be cautious because you're going to have to spend money to buy the products. With POD, there is no real upfront cost. Sometimes, depending on the platform that you're dealing with, there is some minor cost, but they're extremely low. With POD, I do think it's a, a volume game to start and then a quality game once you kind of find your customer base and what you're good at and then your, what you bring to the marketplace and then you can do more of that and build your own customer base. We've talked a lot about building a customer base, going after certain customers. I'm going to attempt to make that clear, especially with the research side of things. Uh, we've also heard that you guys like the small groups, so we are working on some partnerships there as mm -hmm. well. Um, but as this month goes on, we just really want to help people get 100 listings up. I just feel like that's the most important thing. Yeah, and to um, just echo what you just said of like, you know, there are different phases that you're going to go through with, um, we had someone last week saying like, oh, you should put up like a, how many listings have you gotten done this week, like board in the Facebook group. <laughs> and I was like, well, one, me and Steven are very competitive. So we would like drop everything else we were doing just to, uh, you know, get our numbers up on that board. But um, secondly, like that doesn't actually represent what we're doing in our business. We were at a point where we were doing a thousand listings a day because that's a goal that Steven set out to do. And that's <laughs> what we thought was going to be helpful. Um, but we've realized quickly after doing that, maybe even less than a month that we were doing that consistently, we we're like, this isn't actually helping us. And it's actually burning, not just me and Steven out, but also our team, like just trying to hit these numbers and trying to make it a, a pure number game. Uh, and now we're having a lot more success just being very focused on the customers that we're actually selling to uh, and not just putting designs up in, you know, every place that we see um, a possible gap. So I, I don't want to like build this uh, image in your guys' head of like, oh, I constantly have to be, you know, scaling this thing up and I have to be hiring all of these people to help me uh, get all these designs out like, you know, right now. Um, it's just a strategy to help you guys get started and figure out what those customers are that you want to go after. Uh, and, you know, getting away from some of that fear of like making your first couple of listings and, you know, these listings, like I said, because I'm an artist, like the first couple ones up, <laughs> I felt like really represented my skill as a designer, but that's just not true. Like some of the designs that we've seen sell it's like me and Steven will just stare at them for five minutes and like not saying anything we're like how like how does this work why are people buying this um, but we're seeing you know a ton of sales every day on these designs and we're just like, okay like we don't have to fully understand the customer we don't have to understand the why um, but we do want to understand um, you know that if we just put this effort forward and we're seeing those things like what can we now do that we know that this design and these keywords are selling so quickly and that is where you're getting those customers um, from that customer base from that you can retarget and double down and all those things. But I am jumping uh, a little bit ahead. So I'll, <laughs> I'll first let me introduce ourselves now that we're about to actually officially start the call. Um, my name is Nate Hibbert. This is my brother, Stephen Hibbert. And we are Wingman University, or we've started Wingman University. It's actually growing a little bit here, which is exciting. Um, but we want Wingman University to be a hub of information. And currently our focus is on print on demand and we're starting to talk more about partnerships so we can say print on demand and partnerships now which is exciting for me um, but we want this to feel more like a community that you have joined and not so much in just a talk show that you're watching me and Steven put on uh, we really care about hearing uh, you know what people in this community have going on and you know where your bottlenecks are what walls you're hitting because we realize that this is not you know um, enjoyable for me and Steven if we're just making content that makes us feel good. We really want to make sure that we are making content for people who are taking time out of their day to watch this show uh, and hang out with us. So we appreciate you guys. We want to hear, you know, what you're going through, your, um, you know, again, your problems, the walls that you've hit, the bottlenecks that you have. And we've actually made time at the end of the show to speak on some of those things. Uh, but we still do want to bring forth this idea and me and Stephen just have some conversation about getting up 100 listings and what that could look like for you and how that could help you guys. Yes, I, I'm going to take a step back and talk about last week <laughs> for me personally. I think anytime you start mm -hmm. something new, there is a learning curve. 
I was moving a lot of our videos from Facebook over to YouTube. I've had a different editors that I played with. Um, Nathaniel was always suggesting Premiere. I've had it, but never really played around too much with it just because it was, it was learning too much. And I was like, I don't know if I really want to be editing. I just want to drop intro, outro, and clip some things. I don't necessarily want to go too deep into editing. But that was probably two years ago. Now that we've done a lot of videos and I've edited quite a bit, I do enjoy it. And it's something that I want to add. I eventually want to hand it off. But for right now, I want to learn Premiere. But going from the editors I was using to try to learn Premiere and try to get things done in a very quick time period really frustrated me. I, I And I talked to Nathan about this and he brought up a very interesting point that I want to talk about in a second. But I wanted to take a hour and a half long video, cut it up so that I could edit out the pieces to bring it back down into under an hour and also pull pieces out so that I could be clipped on YouTube so we could, for the people that just want the information, they could go and find just the information. It took me probably two days just to figure out how the clips fit together because the other programs that I would use do it automatically and then they resize the video no matter what the frame rates are they put them all together because I was pulling them from zoom they were all different frame rates they're all different sizes it was just a hot mess I didn't know that until I opened up premiere and was having a lot of time a hard time at it but going to Nathaniel and just going to other people that's why we really love this community aspect to once you hit that frustration, ask questions, it makes it so much easier to deal with the stress and be able to go, okay, I need a new game plan because what I initially came to the table with and thought I was gonna be able to accomplish, I'm not going to be able to accomplish it. As I was talking to Nathaniel, cause he knows a little bit more about Premiere, I was just trying to ask him like, what am I doing here? And why is this taking so long? And what, like, how do you get this thing to just do what you want it to do? And he said, it's almost like learning a new language. And I don't know why that really like clicked in my head. I was like, oh, okay. That helps me better understand where I'm at. Plus when we're helping people new and I'm trying to talk to them and I think, oh, this is so simple. Why can't this new person just get this? One, it's because I've been doing this for 15 years. So that might be part of the problem. But two, I think it's anytime you try to learn something new, it is almost like learning a brand new language. Like there's so many nuances to this thing that you're just like not going to pick up. And to even get the first step done in your mind, it might seem super easy but it, it does take a lot of time. So that video that would normally take me two hours to edit took me almost a week and a half to finally get it finished. And I was so proud of myself. But I, I think bringing that information into this group to go, I understand people are just getting started. We are working on better solutions for you guys. I even see some people in the comments asking about mm -hmm. our teaching and our training. <laughs> we are working on all of that. We have teaching and training, but I almost feel like it's a, like after you get started, here's how to better optimize your system and build a procedure for you that works with you. If you're just getting started, I almost feel like we're throwing you in the deep end. That's why me and Nathaniel are very cautious about like, hey, here's something that you can go, here's a class that you can take. We have the art training, which I think is very simplified for anybody to jump into. But as far as our teaching and training, when we talk about indexing and keywords and how to optimize the listing, like I think that's a little too much. And I really think this idea of getting 100 listings up is step one. I just wanted to ask you, when you said that it's like speaking a new language, where did that even come from? And then where was like the mindset for that? And then let's have a little bit of a conversation on that because it, it just really rang true, especially at the time when I was like super frustrated. I was like, I don't understand this at all. Yeah, and you're like, no, it's, almost, it's like a new language. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, the analogy actually came from like my friend group here in Atlanta. A lot of them have done a lot of traveling. <laughs> this is a very diverse area that I'm living in. Um, and I'm like one of like, I'm the odd man out because I only speak one language. So most of my friends speak other languages and I've slowly been trying to like pick them up. I'm not like officially saying that because it's going to take me a long time to learn these languages. But um, you know, I'm listening to the things that they're saying. Like if I'm trying to say something, um, I'll ask them how to say it in French or uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. There's like a, a ton of different languages that are spoken in this area. So uh, French is the one that I'm picking up, I think the most. So I think it was just the idea that was on my head of like, you know, trying to teach Steven, even have a conversation about Adobe Premiere with Steven. I was like, I, like, I can't even communicate the very basics to you um, because you don't understand like, anything about this tool 
uh, and it really has been a while that like he's had it on his computer. I, I installed it maybe a year ago at this point. Um, and I've like tried to like sit down with him and show things, but like it was hard for me because I've been in the Adobe suite for, um, yeah, like almost 15 years, if not more <laughs> than that. So like teaching him like even like what a layout is and all like, here's where the tools are located and this is what all the tools do. Like that for me was just like impossible. <laughs> like at least that's how I felt. Like I was not a very good teacher at saying like, this is the very basics and here are the things that you want to do. Um, and even a step that I had completely forgot about because it's something I've solved for myself and now it's just like so second nature. I don't think about it, which is setting up like the actual clips. So he was talking about the frame rate and all that stuff. Like I have solved that problem my, for myself so long ago that I even forgot that that was something I had to like do. And so he was asking me like questions specific about that. I was like, you just prep, like you just <laughs> do it. Like, I don't see what the problem is here. Um, but then like him screen sharing and showing me exactly what he's going through. I was like, oh yeah, like I solved that because of the way I record the videos from the jump, like is completely different than the way that you're recording videos. Um, so it was just that analogy of like, oh, okay, like I'm trying to teach my brother something that I know, like the back of my hand, the same way some of my friends are trying to teach me a language. And this, that's why I said it. it was like, it, it's almost like learning a language. And now that I think about it more and more, like it really does make sense. Like the content that we've created the last, would have been teaching for like two, three ish years, um, was for me and Steven. <laughs> it was four people who had a background in design and someone who was partnered with them who had a background in SEO. Uh, and we realized that that is probably maybe 1% of our audience who is like, oh, this is fantastic. This is exactly what I need. I can apply that to my business right now. Um, and so after doing all these 20 minute coaching calls and we've like said like, that's where we got this idea of let's make a hundred listings. Um, this seems a lot more rooted in what our community actually needs. Um, and it's only because we've taken all this time to talk with our community to see where you guys are at and, um, to try to piece together, like, what are the things that are working for you guys versus what is maybe getting a little bit too much in the weeds, like too soon. Um, because some people will come to us like with a super data heavy background and we're like, oh yeah, you should be able to jump into this, no problem. Um, but then we realize like, oh, that's actually doing all of that research up front, the more traditional way is kind of harmful to this print on demand platform where it's just like throw stuff at the wall to start and see what works. Um, yeah, we're not. I feel like I'm repeating myself. So yeah, I'll get off. Yeah, this. I was going to say, it's not like we're just saying throw things at the wall to throw things at the wall, but we do think doing and taking action, just like Nathaniel could have talked to me while I was blue in the face. I just didn't understand anything he was saying to start. So I just had to get my hands in there. And then from there, I could tell Nathaniel, hey, when I'm doing this, this is what's coming up. And then he could direct me to the next step. That's what we're trying to get you guys. It's infinitely impossible for us to advise anybody unless they've taken steps of going, hey, I was trying to make a listing. I'm having problems with art. I don't know how to do this specific piece, then we can come alongside you and help you out. I think that's why I love the name Wingman because we truly love to come alongside people and help you out. We can't fly or direct or tell you exactly where to go, but we can come alongside you and help you out when you're having those problems. From learning from that editor and just like, I was like, okay, for me to learn this, I can listen to videos all day. I can watch stuff all day, but I am very tactile. I need to put my hands on things to figure this out. I'm just going to make a whole bunch of these videos and clip them up and try to figure out how to export them to figure out like, how do I get the videos in here and out of this program? That's what I need to focus on. That's where this hundred idea really sparked to me. Cause we've talked about it a little bit before after the 20 minute calls. Then when I went through this problem, I was like, this is what it is. I think there is a level of quality that everybody wants, but in order to hit that, you have to have the quantity to even get up there. So I think when Nathaniel was making those listings on his own, the art quality was high, but the listing quality was extremely non-existent. <laughs> yeah. But as he did it more, he got better at the thing that he was not good at. And I think that's why I really want to push people to just get a hundred listings up more than thinking about throwing it against the wall. Think of it as a training process to mm. know POD, mm. get your hundred listings up so you can get them under your belt. So we talked about this a little bit. I don't know exactly how to phrase this, but we were thinking about 1%. Even if you're doing these 100 listings and you think of each one as a 1% of this process of getting a listing up, once you get 100 of them up, you'll have 100% of how to actually get the listings up and build a consistent system for you. 
in POD, especially because the trends in the market is constantly moving, people that are buying shirts are buying new trends. They buy evergreen things with new designs on them. Making listings is the most important part of POD. It's every business has its own process. If you're buying wholesale, you take a lot of time up front, find out the perfect product before you put a whole bunch of money on this thing and buy a whole bunch of units and then send it in. It's just kind of reverse with POD. And that's why I think I love it because you can put a hundred things in the market and see if any of them work. And there was little to no money put in and then you can start earning money. And the more you learn, the more you earn. I think that's why it was so fascinating to me to have Nathaniel just do this thing eight hours a day, have little to no success, but he was learning a ton about just the process. Then when he had a little bit of success, he was able to go, I think this is my problem. Keywords is my problem. I can put these shirts up. I think the designs are better, but I just can't convert. What is my problem here? And then I was like, oh, it's keywords. But it's hard for me to tell you what your problem is until you've done listings. And if you do a hundred listings, I'm going to bring up my mother because we, she just <laughs> hit her hundred listings uh, last week and she actually gets, got some sales now. So I was like, I think this is the golden ticket because my mother will tell you if I brought her on, she does not know <laughs> like 98% of how to sell KDP products, but she's having success because she's made the listings. Now, if I tell her to make a book, she can do it. If you go back and watch any of those videos I did with my mom, that just that first book was so stressful to her and she was <laughs> getting upset and we were kind of button heads on the video. And that's why I left all that in there because I was like, this is real. I think this is what happens. Like it's so nerve wracking to make that first listing. You're overthinking way too much. Just think of it as this is my training. I need to wax on, wax off a hundred times to be able to get this ingrained in my system so that I don't have to worry about this. And then I can learn the additional steps. Just like learning a language, there's all kinds of rules and even in English, there's all kinds of I before E except after C or some of these other words that don't really fit the rules. It, it's, it's never like a do this, get this. It's a process that you have to learn for yourself. Yeah. And every one of the like, you know, ways of selling online has a barrier to entrance. Um, and so I think most of them are a little bit more apparent, like for private label, you have to have a good amount of money to go out and, uh, you know, actually purchase thing, this thing. And so I think with that, like, you know, I'm going to spend say $10,000 on this product. I think most people are like, you know, wise enough, like, okay, let me do my due diligence and figure out what product <laughs> am I going to buy? And is this actually going to work before I just throw $10,000 at it and see, and, and like hope on something. Um, and so with print on demand, there isn't really that like, you know, there, we talk about the benefits all the time. Like you don't have to put much money, if any money up front. like it's just the time that you have to invest in this thing. And so while it doesn't seem like, you know, as crazy of a barrier to entry, like I really do think that this hundred listings idea unlocks something. And that's kind of the barrier that you have to get past is like, let's make a hundred listings um, so that you just learn what no one can tell you, but like the experience of actually doing it will. And then you can start to like, how do I systemize this? What are, you know, the weak points of my business? Like Steven said, after doing this for, um, you know, however long I was doing it on my own, um, I was able to identify, okay, like I feel like I'm making good designs. Like if I post them not on Amazon, people are like <laughs> liking it on Instagram and telling me in person, like, oh yeah, that's really cool. But when I go to actually make the listing on Amazon, I'm like, I'm just completely guessing at what words and things that I'm putting in here. Like I'm trying to learn this stuff for myself, but that's not my gift at all. So I'm like really just like randomly throwing stuff in there. Um, and so Steven seeing that stuff and just be like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and then being able to like, you know, bring his gift into this thing and use the keyword knowledge that he has. Um, it was like, oh, okay, like that was a huge hole that I had. And the only reason I really understood that that was the thing that was holding me back is because, uh, you know, after making all of those listings and, you know, finding out that some of these keywords are putting my designs in certain areas, uh, then I'm having some success. So it, you have to kind of have your own data to look at. Um, and the only way to get that again is by the experience of actually putting those things up. So yeah, I think I know starting anything new is a little bit overwhelming, but I just want to say like, don't worry about anything other than just the process. Like I, I saw Tim asking some questions. I see some other people asking questions. Don't like hinder yourself other than just getting a hundred listings up. I think I love POD because 
people ask us, should I do A or B? Should I make this design with this title or should I do? Yes. And we just say, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we say, yes, do both of them. So if you're saying, hey, should I focus in on this or should I be thinking about this? Do both. A hundred listings allows you to test all of that stuff. You, as you make those listings, you're going to start seeing patterns that you do. You're going to see things that speed up your own process. Just like my mother, I told her what to do and then she left for a month and then she was just kind of on her own. She would call, but I would say, Ma, I don't at the time right now, sorry. Or we were on the cruise part of the time. So it was like, I didn't have time to really help her. So she just was like plugging away at it. Now, when she came back, she was like, oh, I'm able to do this now. I see this. I can find my books. I understand this process a lot better. Yeah. There's just wanna, some things that I can't answer other than you just doing it. But I just wanted to not stress anybody out. Don't worry about the minute things. Just worry about the overall process of getting the listings up. I didn't mean to cut you off our side. No, I was going to cut you off there, like talking about mom. Like, I really wish we did have like this secret sauce that like solved the problem or like jumped you uh, past this let's make a hundred listings idea. But like, Steven has been pretty uncandid with my mom, like live on these videos to show like, <laughs> this is the process. And if you think like- yeah, it's, hurt holding... it, it's hurt me not to edit some of that out because I'm like, ugh, that sound yeah, I have mean to, to my mother. Some of those videos. <laughs> but like, I just want you guys to understand, like if we're not doing that for our own mother, <laughs> like if we're not giving my mom like the secret to jump past all of this stuff, like, and we've realized like through the person that we love the most, our mom, <laughs> uh, like we're making her go through this process. It's because we really believe in it. And we've just seen it like have her have success. She's always kind of dabbled in this stuff and like asked us questions about it and maybe like thought about putting up listings or she used to like tell me what shirts to put up and I would just do it and see like if that idea would work out or whatever. But now she's completely like doing this on her own and having success with it. It's like, okay, this is the thing that we just need to push people into. So. Yes, we do want to support you guys in other ways than just saying like, make a hundred listings. When we have <laughs> things coming up, there's partnerships that we're trying to put in place to help with this as it's a fairly new idea still. Um, but we really do believe in this idea and we don't want you guys to be afraid to make a mistake. So me, uh, I don't know, yeah, I'm the yeah, more practical I just wanna, brother. I just want to echo that. Okay. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. It, it's just part of the learning process if you watch any calls with my mom, I bring up Edison. I bring up a lot of different like things that inspire me, but they don't do one thing and it takes off and then they could just retire off that one idea. It's mm. many, 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 many things that they try mm -hmm. to finally figure it out. Edison made the light bulb after thousands of attempts to make a light bulb. And even that one light bulb that he made, it wasn't like, Oh, that's the final product. I'm done. It was refined. And even now there's led lights, there's all kinds of things. So it's just the idea and then testing the idea, almost think of yourself like a scientist. Like you're just going to the lab, testing out all these things to figure out what works for you. But the only thing that's going to help you is by running the test. I can't tell you, Hey, you mix these two things together. It's going to be gravy train from here on out. It's just a process of learning. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. It is a learning process. Nobody that I know, and maybe there is in history, has went from crawling to walking instantly. They just stood up, not holding anything, and just got to walking. Think of this as your POD journey. You're just getting started. Give yourself grace and time to learn this process, but you do have to take these steps. You have to grab onto something and slowly put one foot in front of the other. This 100 listing idea is just that. Nathaniel has some things that he wanted to give you as like some rule sets. Cause I didn't want to give anybody uh, yeah. I just wanted to give it to you with, here's the goal. Now reach the goal on your own. Nathaniel's going to give you some practical advice, I guess, for trying to, how to reach that goal. Again, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not the more like practical brother, but I do love <laughs> my, like just being able to have steps and something to work towards. And um, that's what I wanted to talk about, like breaking down this hundred products. And this isn't groundbreaking uh, what I'm about to say, but I think it just helps people wrap their heads around, like how can you actually achieve this? Uh, because it's not as scary as you might think. And I am going to take two seconds just to plug our YouTube channel. We have some, all the videos that Steven's been talking about, the helping his mom or our mom <laughs> are on YouTube. And also uh, the video that I'll mention right now of me making listings in 10 minutes of how you can do that. Those live on YouTube as well. So you can see how in 10 minutes I'm starting from absolute nothing. And at the end of those videos, I have something live on Amazon. Um, but this idea of let's make a hundred listings, um, you know, how can you do that? And I just wanted to break that down into, you can actually do this in one month. 
Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, 100 listings in a year. <laughs> you can do this in a reasonable amount of time, but you just have to break those things down into smaller goals. And we've talked about, you know, even that in a couple of our last shows um, of having smaller goals to go after. So the breakdown for me, if I was to do this, I, I would break it down into 100 a month and 25 a week. And that means that you're creating five designs Monday through Friday. Um, and, you know, that is a realistic thing that I think you can actually achieve. If you go every day, Monday through Friday, I'm going to set apart uh, an hour in the first day and just see if I can get these five listings up. And again, they don't have to be the greatest thing in the world. Use the tools that we've showed you guys. Uh, use Amazon search bar and Spark to just get those things up and on Amazon. And as you're moving forward, like Steven said, if you're even getting 1% every time, or 1% better every time you put up a listing, at the end of 100 listings, you'll be 100% better than when you started <laughs> off or you'll understand the process like a hundred percent of getting these shirts up um, you know we work on the wording of that a little bit but hopefully you guys are seeing the idea there uh, it doesn't just have to be like always this goal of i have to make 100 listings i have to make 100 listings let's just start with monday through friday let's make five listings uh for a month and then we'll be at that hundred and then you'll have uh you know just the understanding that unfortunately we can't just, you know, hand over to you. It's something that you have to experience for yourself. It's something that you just have to put the time into. Um, you know, that is one of the barriers of entry to print on demand. There's not a lot of things that stop you from getting those listing up or having success with the platform, I should say. Um, but time is definitely a factor here. And you just have to put that time in to really get the most out of this platform. And then after the 100 listing, like I said, we're working on a lot of stuff to help you guys keep moving forward. But I feel like that's where mine and Stephen's like experience will be a lot more helpful in our expertise of how do I systemize this thing? How do I hire other people now to help me with this? How do I expand past just uh, Merch by Amazon or KDP? Like, how do I grow this thing in and actually build those, uh, you know, product lines that you guys have been talking about <laughs> for the last couple of years? Um, how do I do all these things that really allow me to have a print on demand business and not just like a side hustle or something, you know, one account that I have somewhere that's helping out a little bit every month? Uh, and so that's the idea that we want you guys to kind of grasp and like I said, there's a lot more fun stuff that we get to do, like the doubling down and the split testing, but you have to have that base understanding. And for us, from all the conversations we've had, once again, the best way for us uh, to advise you guys on how to get there is to make 100 listings. So that's kind of our call to action for you guys this week, and maybe a call to action to check out some of our YouTube content. We're making original content over there, but also just a better archive of some of the content that we've done in the past, and we're making it smaller. We know some of you guys don't like sitting down just watching us for an hour because <laughs> we can just go off on these tangents. So we're trying to bring like the most focused part of these calls, put them up on YouTube, uh, and just do a better job of curating some of our content for that platform uh, and helping you guys find it a little bit easier. So. That's where um, I think most of our ideas are gonna end for this call. Um, and so we appreciate you guys for jumping on here and hanging out with us. Hey guys, thanks for checking out that live call. Remember, if you'd like to join us, it's every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern. The link is in the description. All right guys, have a good one.